Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you guys are doing very well and enjoying lectures at Lee Professor YouTube channel. Cool. Uh, so in this lecture, we're going to be discussing about uh, disjoint sets, uh, data structures. Uh, these are quite useful um, data structures, especially uh, for certain kind of problems. For example, structuring uh, atoms or finding the sequence of atoms in, in a molecule or analyzing the uh, atom sequence uh, in molecules or uh, graph algorithms. Uh, many, many kind of graph algorithms make use of disjoint sets data structures. Um, in image analysis, uh, finding aliases, um, analyzing aliases, and so on. So there, you, you may find uh, many other applications if you do Google search. Anyways, so let's discuss what uh, these uh, data structures are, right? Uh, before going forward, let's uh, try to set a practical example. For example, you, Harry, um, you have been given a responsibility to uh, throw a party, okay? And uh, you know some people, but you don't know everyone. And uh, the people whom you know, um, they know some other people or their friends. Your job is to invite people who are, you know, either their common friend or they know in uh, some way to each other. Or it's sort of... Uh, you might have observed uh, this scenario, like say there are social networking websites where you connect via links, okay? I am connected with this member and that member is connected with that member. So I'm basically connected uh, to the third member through second member, okay? So that sort of thing here. So what, what essentially is that you want to invite some friends and their friends so you want to know essentially uh, how many such groups you can make where, um, you know, uh, the people in one group know in some way to each other and the people in two groups, they don't know. There is no link between them. So that way you can, uh, you can see, okay, I want to throw two parties or three parties and how many people going to be in one party. All right, let's say uh, Harry knows Anjali, okay? And Anjali knows Hadi and Kim, all right? And Heidi, uh, Heidi knows Julia, right? Uh, Julie. And there is Mrs. Patel, she knows Smith and Floyd, okay? And you have been given this list. So we want to know essentially how many groups of friends are there or how many groups we can make out of uh, those people and how many people are there in each group, okay? So that's our problem, okay? Um, now let's see where, how the disjoint sets can fit or help us to solve this problem, right? So let's try to understand what are these joint sets, set data structures first. Remember, these are dynamic sets. Disjoint dynamic sets. Dynamic sets means you can uh, add elements or remove elements dynamically. And these maintain a collection of disjoint uh, dynamic sets, okay, that data structure. For example, you have, say, object A. B, C, N, H, I, J, L, M. It's different objects. And let's say you have arranged them in different groups. Say A, B, C are together, N just one, H, I, J, and L and M are together. Okay, so you have, you know, made four groups with the different uh, objects in it. Or you can also say that, you know, I have a very big set and that set has smaller sets. Say S1, smaller set, has elements A, B, and C. 
in the same way s2 has only n one element s3 and s4 right so what essentially this is this is nothing but a disjoint a disjoint set data structure that is capital s now s1 and s2 they don't have anything to do with each other same way s2 and s3 s3 and s4 now by any chance if any element of any of these s1 s2 s3 makes a relationship with any other element of any other set then we need to merge these two sets right so let's say if element b makes a relationship with element l then what we want to do we want to merge s4 and s1 okay so what essentially is few operations we can think of let's say x is an object in a set so we at least want to have a uh, few operations a make set which makes a set union is nothing but the merging operation okay and find set right so what it what does it do make set means um, it will make a set in which the object x is there okay and find set means in which set this object x belongs to and union will merge union operation will merge two sets together where there is a common um, common item or common understanding or let's say x and y are friends together okay so how we can represent uh, in memory uh, these structures well very simple we have learned about the linked lists okay so we simply represent these sets um, via linked list for example s1 how we want to represent let's say how the linked list will look like element a b and c right and we have necessary arrangements for pointers so uh, the head will point to a is pointing to b pointing to c okay and c c's head is is nil okay same way a is pointing to head no well, basically the idea is that the pointer connection that we can find each element in the list okay and each element is connected so this is a typical linked list example where you can see these pointer connections so don't worry about these pointers these are just addresses okay All right, so that's a typical uh, linked list structure for this joint set S1, we can say like that. And if we wanna represent S4, same way we can do that, say. All right, necessary pointer connections, data element, and uh, you know, back and forth uh, pointer connections, All right? Now, for example, as we were discussing here, Let's say the element B and L, these two make a relationship with each other, or, you know, these two become friend. Then we want to merge S1 and S4. And when we merge S4, S4 loses its identity because all the elements of S4 are merged now with the S1. Okay. Or you may think of, uh, you know, S1 is a tree with its root okay root is pointing to a and then it is linked with b and b is connected with the c so you can think of it's, it's a tree right and when we want to merge we want to well simply uh, the Okay, as for same way, we can represent it via a tree where the L becomes its root and that is connected with M. Okay. And when we want to merge, we want to simply change the, the root which is L 
as for set and point it to C1. Very simple operation. Okay, whatever is the last last element in that tree is one. Uh, its child becomes the L or L from S4 is pointing now to C. So this becomes whole one big giant tree. And now we call it S1. That's a merging thing. And S4 loses its identity because we merged all the elements with the S1. Very simple operation. Okay. We can say, you know, pictorially we can represent it that way. But C is now uh, connected with L, M, and all pointer connect connections, necessary arrangements. Okay. And now the tail, tail pointer of S1 now points to the last element that is M, right? And that's a simple merging union operation, right? Now let's go back to our, our example which we were discussing. Let's try to help Harry how we can help him okay so let's see uh, we uh, you know we put a number okay or we make notes so let's say we put a number for each of the friends say one two including Harry so one two three four five six seven eight nine you know, whatever are the number of friends so we have put the uh, label or say integer label okay and we, what we want to do, we want to make sets, okay. So initially, we just have one, one, one element in a set, right. And as we have learned that we can, you know, just make one element in a linked list and this is just a set, okay. Now, after doing that, second step, we want to see that uh, for each element in a set, we want to see that uh, is that element is making any relationship with any other element in any other set. Okay, so let's say 1. Is there a link between 1 and 2? No, but there is a link between 1 and 6. So now we merge 1 and 6 together. So these two elements because there was a link, we merged 1 and 6 together. So that is one is Harry and number six is Anjali, okay. In the same way, we check other links. So two, for example, makes a link with the four and five, okay. Now let's talk about three. Three makes a link with the seven, okay. And now when three makes a link with the seven, seven set is destroyed and it just becomes one as we discussed. And then eight. Now, at the third step, we want to see again if there is any relationship between uh, two sets, any any element of uh, each set. Say, for example, this set one and six. Whether this one and six, either one or either six, is making any relationship with any element of the any other set in our disjoint set data structure. So we already saw that one only has relationship with six, but now we want to analyze whether six has a relationship with any other element in two, four, in, in this set, which is represented by two, four, and five. So as we have seen in the previous uh, figure that six makes a connection with the five, okay? So what we want to do, we want to merge these two sets together. Okay? And how we want to merge? It's simply that 6 or let's say 2 will now point to 6, okay. So we can say that way and in the same way uh, now this second set was destroyed and we left with, with one set S1 and remember here we had 8 number 8 element and that was um, at the step 2 was not connected but now when we're going to analyze this set 3 and 7 which has 3 and 7 elements so 7 makes a connection with 8 right so what we're going to do we're going to merge 
827. So it's simply now 8.27, right? And we are left with uh, finally two disjoint sets, okay? So now Harry knows that uh, he can throw two parties or, you know, uh, two group of friends. And uh, and he knows the number as well that, okay, in one group, five people, in another, three, right? So what we did essentially, let's summarize it in, in steps. So what we did, we read how many total number of objects were there, okay? And then for each object, we created a first set, okay? which has only one element and these lines basically are doing the job which we did in the step 2 and step 3, okay. So step 2 we made connections from say 1, one to 6, remember that and 2 to 5 and 3 to 7 and 8 and step 3 we connected all together and after this step 3 we got these two disjoint sets, okay? Simple enough. Now let's try to understand uh, how much time is gonna take, okay? So let's say make set is number of objects updated, the make set is one, and with the union, you know, x3, x2, because we're gonna update those objects, the necessary pointer structures and all, so we count it as a step. So essential uh, complexity or number of operations uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, make set or union or find set, how many you know, operations uh, you're going to be needing it um, in a brute force, a worst case scenario is simply you calculate, you know, you just add it up all together and it turned out to be any square, right? Now that's... Um, that's a pretty, you know, in terms of complexity, quite a quite high. I mean, it will take longer time, but you know, there are uh, many heuristics which can be applied. Say, for example, remember when we were discussing about the merging thing, okay? So, if we want to merge, so if we have, say, uh, a smaller or bigger set. So we know essentially uh, in the beginning how many elements are there in one set. So how, when we're going to merge, we're going to just simply attach the smaller set with the bigger one come, rather than doing the other way around. That's simple one heuristics, but there are other heuristics possible, all right? So that was a basic discussion about disjoint sets, heavily used in uh, graph algorithms. Okay. Um, some other applications, say image analysis, alias analysis, classifying atoms in molecules, etc., etc. All right. So thank you guys. I hope uh, you guys have uh, enjoyed this lecture. And thank you for your wonderful comments. And uh, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Lee Professor channel on YouTube. We appreciate your feedback and support. Have a wonderful day.